All right. Hello, everyone. Hello there, everyone. We're going to be doing our 2.4 exponential functions, as you know, um, that I've had to kind of scour around to find notes from other textbooks on this as we don't have our own textbook. So here we go. Uh, 2.4. You'll never know the difference. OK, very nice. All right. So exponential functions. So um, an exponential function, as you can see here, it's, it's got a definition, is a nonlinear function of the form where uh, of the form y equals a times b to the x power. a cannot be 0, b cannot be 1, and b must be greater than 0. Uh, are kind of the conditions there. All right. So consider the exponential function, or the, I guess really the two here below, right? Um, it's the same one. Complete each table. What do you notice about consecutive values of x in each table? What do you notice about consecutive values of f of x? So um, you guys would fill this in together. Um, and you can grab a calculator. You know, this is, for example, 16 times 2 to the 0 power. You'd plug 0 in for x. So 16 times 2 to the 0 power. This would equal 16. Um, if you plugged in 1, 16 times 2 to the first power, that would be 32. Uh, 16 times 2 squared would be... 64. And at this point, I'm going to start needing a calculator. The next one is 128. 16 times 2 to the fourth power would be 256. And then 16 times 2 uh, to the fifth power would be 512. All right, and then this one's very similar, but you can see it's it's going up by twos now. We already know that zero is 16. We already know that two is 64. We already know that four is 256. Um, we've, we've got those from the left side tail, but now we gotta go to the sixth power, the eighth power, and the 10th power. So I don't feel like not having a calculator here, so I'm gonna have a calculator. Um, to the sixth power would be 1024. To the eighth power would be 4096. And then to the tenth power would be 16,384. Now, what we need to notice here is that um, our pattern, you can see it a little more clearly on the left, that you're counting by twos. This is uh, multiplying it by two, it's doubling every single time, doubling, 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 etc. Um, on this one, however, it's a little bit easier to notice maybe in the early stages, but uh, maybe even down here. But these are all multiplying by fours, by four, times by four, times by four, times by four, times by four. And that's just because essentially it's doubling the gap of these. Um, you can think of it like that, right? Um, if you multiply by 2 and multiply by 2 again, you're multiplying by 4, and that's what's happening here because you're skipping that, uh, you're skipping the odd value x, x is here. So you're doubling by 2 and doubling by 2 again, you're multiplying by 4. So um, same pattern here. It's just because you're skipping, um, you know, you kind of double up on, on the, those multiplications. So yeah, very, very cool. Let's continue on. Um, I don't want to repeat. Oh, well, I guess it could repeat, but use one half. Um, yeah, let's just skip ahead. Get to the main things. All right. Identify and evaluating exponential functions. All right. So here's where we get to the examples that, you know, you're going to see on your skill check and on next week's test. Um, we already talked about the definition of an exponential function. Remember, the independent variable is x, um, and dependent variable is y. All right. Anyway, we knew this. Does each table represent a linear or exponential function? So here, you can kind of see the solutions on these. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the differences between the y values uh, and x values. So when you look at table A, notice the pattern, basically. That's kind of what you're looking for. You're going from 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8. Well, you could probably identify that pattern is 
adding two each time, adding two, adding two, adding two each time. The X's are increasing by one each time. Um, not really that significant. Um, the X's aren't as crucial as the Y values here. It's the Y values that are given, gonna give away the most information. So since you're adding, and this is addition, uh, this indicates a linear function. And you guys can see that here. Um, as X increases by one, Y increases by two, the rate of change is constant. So the function is linear. When it says constant, that just means uh, adding the same amount, right? So adding the same amount, in this case, adding two. Uh, if you look at B though, you can see a different pattern. Uh, again, X's are going up by ones. It's not too significant, so don't worry about it, but look at the Y's again. This, um, you might think, oh, I'm adding four, but are you adding four the next time? Are you adding four the next time? No, so that's not the pattern. Look at the whole thing, four to eight to 16, 32. That in general is doubling, right? Multiplying by two, multiplying by two, multiplying by two. You're doubling. So in this case, you are obviously multiplying by a common amount, right? So if you're multiplying by a common amount, this indicates an exponential function. You get a guy's going to get see that here. As x increased by one, y is multiplied by two, keyword being multiplied. <laughs> so the function is exponential. So that's how you can determine them. Look at the pattern. Addition or subtraction pattern would indicate um, linear. And a multiplying pattern or even potentially dividing pattern uh, represents exponential. All right. So evaluate each function for the given value of x. This is a matter of just plugging the x value in um, to the function. So as you can see in this example, um, you have the function negative 2 times 5 to the x power. And it's saying x is 3. So you're going to put that 3 into that exponent spot. So it'll become negative 2 times 5 to the third power. And you can see that's what they're putting here. And they work it out. So the main thing is when you do this, make sure you follow the order of operations. Exponents come first and then multiply. So that's why 5 to the third came first. That became 125. And then we multiplied by negative 2. And we got our answer of negative 250. And this one's the same. Um, X equaling negative 2, you're plugging it in. We have 3 times 0 0.5 to negative 2 power. So negative 2 is going in for X. And again, you can evaluate this, and of course, the answer comes to 12. All right. So you guys had a few minutes in class to kind of do these problems sort of independently. Um, but let's take a look at these. Table 1. Uh, again, notice the pattern, 8 to 4 to 2 to 1. Well, this looks like it's dividing by 2 every time we're cutting in half. Now, here's what's important, though. I don't really want you to think about these tables as division when it, when it is division. I, I get that. It's 8 to 4 to 2 to 1. It is dividing by 2, and you're not wrong at, at all. However, I just don't want you to think about it as division. I want you to think about it as multiplying. So dividing by 2 would be the same as multiplying by what fraction? That's what I need you to think about. And if you think about that, you'll realize that it's the same as multiplying by one half, right? Eight times one half is four. Four times one half is two. So instead of saying, oh, it's eight divided by two, say it's eight times one half. Um, this is a crucial, crucial thing for later on that I'm trying to sort of get you prepared for. So don't ever think of division. Yes, you can recognize that it's exponential, even if it's division, that's not a problem. Exponential. Like we we know it's it's exponential. We're good, right? Um, but I just want you to get used to thinking about the multiplication part of it rather than the division part of it. Uh, and then number two, this table, look at the y's. The x's are going up by a different amount, but they're constant as well. You're adding four every time with the x's. So a constant x is a good thing to notice. But the y's are telling a bigger story here. 1 to 0, 0 to negative 1, negative 1 to negative 2. This is all subtracting 1 every time. So since you're subtracting by the same amount every time, this would be linear. All right.
uh, here. It's just a matter of plugging them in. So we're going to plug in three numbers each time. So we're going to plug in the negative two, zero, and one half. I'm going to start on the right side. These are the ones we don't typically get to in class. So negative three times one fourth to the negative two power, negative three times one fourth to the zero power, and negative three times one fourth to the one half power. All right. So uh, again, evaluating this, you can use a calculator. Um, you could probably do it in your head as well. Uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be negative 3 times 16. I think it's going to be negative 48. Let's check this out. Let's pull up my calculator on the screen so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So uh, rather than me using my in-person calculator here. Just give it a second to load. All right. So negative 3 times, um, I already forgot, one fourth to the negative two power. There you go, negative 48, yes. This one, negative 48. Uh, we do the same thing. Now I could already tell you this one, anything to the zero exponent is gonna be equal to one. So one fourth to the zero power is one. So I know this is negative three times one, which is negative three. So one sec. Sometimes I try to use the eraser and it's a little laggy. Give it one minute. Okay. Um, so yeah, what I was saying is one fourth to the zero power, anything. It doesn't matter if it's a fraction, whatever. Anything to zero power is always going to equal one. So that's why um, negative three times one fourth to the zero power is equal to negative three because you're doing negative three times one. So um, there's your indication there. All right. Um, I think this the next one's going to be negative three over 16, but we'll see. Um, so negative three times one fourth, and this is two, the one half power. Uh, no, I'm bad at doing math sometimes. Um, all right, so negative 1.5. This is better probably in fraction form, so I'm just, how do I put this in fraction form? Math to fraction, there you go, negative three halves. That's what we're looking at, so negative three halves. So this one's negative three over two. Yes, okay, I can see that now. All right, so uh, it's the same thing with these other ones. Um, we probably did these ones in class, so make sure you've answered them from class. But of course, you know, we'll have two times nine to the negative two power, uh, two times nine to the zero power, two times nine to the one half power. Um, and then even this one, 1. 1.5 times two to the negative two power, 1.5 times 2 to the 0 power, 1.5 times 2 to the 1 half power. And you guys can get this value. So I'll already go ahead and tell you that this one is 2 and this one is 1.5 because of the uh, exponent of 0. 9 to the 0 power is going to be 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. 2 to the 0 power is going to be 1, so 1. 1.5 times 1 is 1. 1.5. So I already know those. But uh, the other ones we probably, you know, also do in class. So make sure you get those. All right. Uh, moving on to graphing exponential functions. So exponential functions have a feature known as an asymptote. Asymptote is an invisible line that the function approaches but does not cross. Right? It does not cross and does not touch either. So... Look at, a. I guess I'll try to use this graph as an illustration for you. Look at like, let's focus on the blue line, for example, right? Here's kind of a, a thing that's happening with the blue line. Imagine you take a number and you divide it in half, right? So for example, take one, right? And you divide it in half. You divide it in half, you get 0 0.5, right? 
multiplying it by one half, dividing it by two. If you take half of that, you'll get 0 0.25. If you take half of that, you get 0 0.125. You take half of that, you get 0 0.06 something. Uh, 25. You take half of that. At this point, I'm going to need a calculator. you get 0 0.03125. You take half of that, you get 0 0.015625. Now my point is, try to recognize what happens here visually. You go from one to half to 0.5 to 0.125, et cetera, et cetera. So if I were to keep taking things by a half, would I ever get to exactly zero? Or if I were to ever continue, you know, taking things by half, would I ever get a negative number? The answer to those questions is no, because you'll just keep getting smaller and smaller. Like, for example, you could keep this going. Eventually, you'd get like 0 0.0000003 something, right? Um and so, yes, and, and the more you take in half, the more zeros you add, it gets closer and closer to zero, but it never actually technically gets to zero. It just becomes very, 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 very small. And that's how an asymptote works, is this line is going to get closer and closer and closer to zero, the x-axis. You know, you think of it taking in half one time, in half again, and half again, and half again. It gets always closer and closer, and it starts to almost level off because it looks like it is zero, but it's technically not. And it just it just goes pretty much flat um, along the x-axis nearly because, again, it's always getting closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's never actually touching the x-axis and never actually becoming zero. And of course, then never crossing the x-axis either and becoming negative. So never touches zero, obviously never goes past it and becomes negative. So it just sort of rides along it, right? As it gets closer and closer to zero. That's what an asymptote is. Um, just to kind of emphasize that point. So with these, um, when it comes to making these graphs, the best way to probably do it is to make points and plot those points. So if you're given instructions to graph this function, the way I would do it is I would start plugging numbers into that function. So um, you can see these are numbers that they picked to plug in. And these are the y values that they got when they plug in. So you plug in negative 2. You have 4 times 2 to the negative 2 power. That comes out to 1. And so you have a point at negative 2, 1. Now. You plug in negative 1. It comes out as 2. So you have that point negative 1, 2. And then you could put them on the graph. And you can start to graph your line. So this is a matter of where, you know, I would plug them in and uh, find some points and graph those points in particular. So I'm sure we'll do one on our own. Let's go ahead and do one from down here. All right. So negative, negative three to the x power. So I'm gonna pick like negative two. We're gonna put that in first. So negative three to the negative two power. And this is negative 0 0.11. So hard to graph, it would be, uh, it's negative, right? Yeah, so it's at negative two, it's basically really close to zero is what I'm getting here. Negative one point, or negative 0 0.11. All right, if I try the same thing, but I plug in negative 1, so negative 3, 2, the negative 1 power, um, what, I, what did I type in wrong? Maybe it's the wrong negative. Yeah, probably the wrong negative. There you go. So it's negative 1 third. So at negative 1, I'm at negative 1 third, negative 0.33, so a little bit further away from the x-axis, but, you know, still kind of there. We're not at negative 1 yet. We're only at negative 1 third. Um, I also, if we plug in zero, we already know it's going to be equal to one. So negative three to the zero power, um, negative one. 
right? Remember, uh, this is really doing three to the zero power, which is one, and then the negative. The negative is not actually being uh, raised to the exponent at all. So negative one here, zero, negative one. You plug in one, so negative three to the first power. This, of course, is going to be negative three. And I don't think I'm going to have room for it if I plug in two, but if I plugged in two, negative three to the second power, I get negative nine. So yeah, at two, I'd have to go down to negative nine, which I don't have the room for. So more or less, here is our graph. It's not perfect. It's a job done, though. And notice how I'm leveling it off. I know, I understand where the asymptote's going to be here. The asymptote's going to be the x-axis. You can see how we were getting closer and closer to it, but not crossing it. So that's why it's very important on this side that I'm really kind of staying below the x-axis. I'm drawing it alongside it pretty much. Because so it's always going to get closer and closer, but never touch it or cross it. Um, We could try this again. Let's do it with number nine. Let's try this with number nine. I'm interested to see how this one goes. So go ahead and drawing an X and Y axis. All right, so we have one half times two. Let's plug in negative two. So one half uh, times two to the negative two power. Again, make sure you use the right negative button. 0 0.125. So when I plug in negative 2, I get 0 0.125. So something pretty close to 0. I'm just going to put it here. If I plug in negative 1, I'm just going to copy this and replace this with the negative 1, I get 0 0.25. So right about there. If I plug in 0, so again, I'll copy this and I'll change this out for uh, a 0. Then I've got 0 0.5, so 0, 0 0.5. If I plug in 1, I should have 1 as an outcome, I believe. I do. So I plugged in 1, got out 1. That's going to be this point. And then the next point, if I plug in 2, uh, we get 2. And now if you're noticing what's happening here is we're kind of doubling it, right? If you notice our y values, look at the y values. 0.25 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 1, 1 to 2. I would bet the next one would be at 4, right? If I plugged in 3, I'd have the outcome of 4. So we could just test it real quick just to be like super sure. But if I plugged in 3, I bet it would be 4. Yes, because it keeps doubling. Um, so that helps us. And again, we remember that there's an asymptote on the x-axis. So be careful about how you draw your line on the left side. But there's your function. All right. Um... All right, uh, let's see what else we have to do still. There's still a few more things. Um, I wanna talk about something if it's not mentioned here, so. Okay, eh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and briefly mention this now since we've made our graphs, but there's some information about um, these that's worth noting. In the function, the a value is essentially your y-intercept value. Sometimes it's also seen as a starting value when it comes to like some sort of real world question because we don't typically go to negative values. So, um, so this a value tends to be kind of what we think of as the initial value or the y-intercept value or the value at zero, all the same. So you can see when at the, the value at zero, the y-intercept, essentially, that's at one half. And that's because one half is the a value. So that's something to keep in mind. It's also similar with this one. The a value here was a negative one. Another way of looking at this is that it's negative one times three to the x power. It's kind of a different way of looking at it. Negative one is your a value. You can see negative one was that y-intercept. Negative one is uh, what we get when x is zero. So on this one, the y-intercepts be a negative 2. Now, we didn't graph it, but if you did graph it, you'll see the y-intercepts at negative 2. So the a value is essentially your y-intercept. Next point is the b value is your growth rate. So you know how I said here we were doubling? Well, that's because we were multiplying by 2, which is our b value here. So the b value is an indicator of 
uh, what you're growing by. So if it was three, we would be tripling numbers every time. If it was um, one fourth, we would be cutting them by fourth every time. So the B value is how much you're growing by. So here at three, you could see what we were doing is we were tripling. Uh, we were at one third, then we went to one, then we went to three, then we were gonna go to nine. So it's tripling, it's tripling upside down because it's negative, but it's still tripling. So I wanted to bring those points up because those are also I think questions on your skill check. All right. So this one's comparing the graph to the parent function. Um, we're not going to have to really do this too much. The main thing here, more or less, is, is know how to make the graph. And uh, essentially those things about what I said about the, the A and the B value. So I'll talk really more about the A and the B value in this case. So uh, this is, again, basically a negative 1 times a 1 half to the x power. So things that I'll, I'll talk about is since the a value is negative one, that's going to be our y-intercept. And you can see that here. When you zero, x is zero, the f of x or y value is negative one. And again, you can see that on this red dot here. Negative one is your y-intercept. It's the point when x is zero. Um, the other point I'll make is that one half, your b value, b is equal to one half. This tells you your growth rate. In this case, it's really decay rate because you're getting smaller. But look what's happening. Negative 4 to negative 2, negative 2 to negative 1, negative 1 to negative 1 half, negative 1 half to negative 1 fourth. You are cutting these in half every single time. Multiplying by half, multiplying by half, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So times 1 half, times 1 half, right? So on and so forth. So that's an indication of the B value. That's how the B value works. So those are the things I kind of want to talk to you guys about with this one. Um, yeah, we're not really talking about any of those things. Um, there is one real life question on the skill check. I forget what it is. I think it might be money related, but um, yeah, let me investigate it real quick and I'll come back to you. So just pause for one minute. Yeah, there's only one problem that isn't really emphasized on here. Um, that is on the skill check. It's similar to this question, but it's a bit different. So I'm just going to kind of make it up down here. So don't worry about this part. Let's just fill this. Let's just work out a new problem. So the problem is similar to one on the skill check. It's going to be about money. Uh, so let's say uh, that you invest, um, let's do $100,000. Okay. $100,000 you're investing at let's say 8% annually. So annually just means once a year. And the question is, how much money will there be after 12 years? So a uh, little formula for this, again, one that isn't brought up in this chapter. It's actually brought in in a later section, but it's not worth printing a whole new section for one question. So I didn't do that. Um, so we're going to just cover this. So your formula is going to be y equals a one plus r to the x power. So one plus r is essentially your b value, um, more or less, but uh, broken down a little bit. So it's easier to plug something in. So our A value is our initial amount, which is $100,000. The R value is going to be our rate, so 1 plus 0 0.08. I kind of did stuff like this before. And then X is going to be our time in years. It probably sometimes is a T instead of an X, but I'm going to use an X. It's the same. Uh, and that's going to be a 12. So we're going to put this in our calculator. And we're going to find out what we get. So we have 100000 and we're going to times it by 1.08. Keep in mind 1.08 is what 1 plus 0 0.08 equals. So that's why I'm just typing that in. Uh, and then to the 12th power. So after 12 years, this would increase to 251,817. 251,817. And, and some change as well. Since it's money, let's go to two decimal places. So 0, 1. So a penny. 
$251,817 and a penny. All right, so be mindful of this question when you see it on the skill check. I think that's going to be about it for now. Um, yeah, we'll do a little bit more maybe in class, but I think that's pretty much covers the essentials for the skill check. All right, best of luck to you guys. I'll see you in class. Bye for now.